Welcome to this presentation on cannabis history, brought to you by Alpha Tech Pet Incorporated, serving the animal care and veterinary professions since 1989. I'm Dr. Seitz, the president of Alpha Tech Pet Incorporated. Cannabis is one of the most ancient medicinal plants known to man. And up until 1937, it was the third most prescribed medicine in the United States with over 2,000 preparations made by some 280 producers, including major pharmaceutical firms like Park Davis, Squibb, Pfizer, and Eli Lilly. All of that came to a screeching halt in 1937 upon implementation of the Marijuana Tax Act to be later replaced by the Controlled Substances Act in 1970, marking an 80-year absence in our country of opportunities for research and development on cannabis-associated medicinals. Prior to the end of alcohol prohibition, Harry Anslinger, who would later become the Treasury Department's first commissioner of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, had claimed that cannabis was not a problem, did not harm people, and quote, there is probably no more absurd fallacy than the idea that it makes people violent. End quote. His critics argue he shifted positions not due to objective evidence, but self-interest because of obsolescence of the Department of Prohibition, which he headed when alcohol prohibition ceased. In other words, his position change was nothing more than a politically motivated maneuver to retain a high-profile position elsewhere with the Federal Bureau of Narcotics as he began a systematic campaign targeting cannabis. It was also around this time that the movie Reefer Madness was released, further demonizing cannabis. By the time the 1970 Controlled Substances Act replaced the Marijuana Tax Act, cannabis had been relegated to a position as a Schedule I controlled substance and classified as illegal because of high abuse potential, no medicinal use, and severe safety concerns. This put cannabis on par with drugs like heroin and LSD, the most dangerous of all drugs, all being banned for prescription. Meanwhile, as this was the cannabis state of affairs in the United States, in Israel, researcher Dr. Raphael Meshulam of Hebrew University was working with cannabis, trying to identify its major components. In 1963, he elucidated the structure of CBD, cannabidiol, and in 1964, the structure of THC, delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, the only psychoactive cannabinoid found within cannabis. But it wasn't until 24 years later that the first cannabinoid receptor was identified in the brain of rats in 1988 by doctors Alan Hollett and William Devane. Then in 1990, Dr. Lisa Mitsuda and colleagues at the National Institute of Mental Health mapped the DNA sequence of a THC-sensitive receptor in the rat's brain, dubbed CB1. From there, scientists developed genetically altered mice lacking this specific receptor called knockout mice, which, when given THC, were immune to its psychoactive effects. This was a substantial discovery for it suggested the presence of a prior unknown molecular signaling system in mammals. Then two years later in 1992, Dr. Raphael Meshulam and collaborators Drs. Lemur Hannes and William Devane from the National Institute of Mental Health discovered the first endogenous cannabinoid, arachidonyl ethanolamine, which they named anandamide from the Sanskrit word for bliss. This was the first internally produced cannabinoid to be discovered, a discovery which would not have taken place had Dr. Meshulam not initiated research on cannabis and phytocannabinoids some 29 years earlier. In 1993, a second receptor was identified as part of the immune and nervous systems, dubbed CB2. And in 1994, Dr. Meshulam again discovered a second endogenous cannabinoid named 2-AG for 2-arachidonoglycerol. These discoveries finally confirmed the presence of the complex molecular signaling system present in all mammals that we now know as the endocannabinoid system. So what does the endocannabinoid system do? Basically, 
It's a body-wide molecular signaling system that upregulates and downregulates various body systems like the nervous system, the endocrine system, the immune system, and many others in a modulatory role to maintain system balance, something we call body homeostasis. And as a result, it fine tunes various vital physiological functions. Think of it as medicine on a system level as opposed to simply treating symptoms. It is believed that this is possibly the most important system within our bodies and involved in virtually all disease conditions. This is an exciting frontier in which I believe we're going to see many transformative medical developments emerge over the next several years. We thank you for your participation and hope this presentation helps you better understand some history of cannabis relative to the discovery of the endocannabinoid system.